Hi, I'm Kevin, and welcome to my podcast, Finding My Freedom, where I talk about my life as a musician and how I left it for 10 years, and in the process of gaining it back, the universe had a lot more in store for me than I figured. Well, I have to say, this process has been uh, very eye-opening. It's been very good in a lot of ways. It's been real tough in a lot of ways. It is, even though I've played music and been in front of people my whole life, I've always had uh, the guitar as my barrier, <laughs> so to speak, where I just um, was able to play or sing a song or do something like that and not have to talk and be vulnerable and uh, so it's been very interesting that way the things that have came up have been uh, well there's been a lot of stuff come up in between these podcasts and so I uh, have to be grateful for the uh, way that I can at least recognize these issues and try to my best to heal it and move on but who knows as things seem to come back when they want to come back and you just gotta try to figure out a way to heal it and move on so when I was in one of my worst periods uh, it was April of 2019 and I had lost my job as a electrician helper I had not played music in years um, I had a second divorce and I was working at a temp service and one night in April there there was a full moon I remember saying man I can't can't do this anymore I have to do something different and it came back to me the best time of my life was when I played music so that previous November I built my first guitar it was uh, out of parts I bought parts from the internet I tried to uh, basically whatever I felt I could do as far as my skills went and then if the stuff that I couldn't do I just I bought the part for it so that it, it would at least work <laughs> It's been my number one since I built it. And uh, what I had done while I was building it was filmed a little bit, like nothing very good or like anything. I just, it was just a thought. I had my phone in my pocket. I didn't even use a stand or a light or anything. I just put it in a corner and recorded while I was building this. And I thought, well, if there's anything salvageable out of it, maybe I could uh, do like a how-to type of thing. Because whenever I'd get stuck on something, I always would turn to YouTube and try to, you know, figure it out that way. So it hit me. It's like, well, I've got this footage. Maybe I can actually do something with it. And so the next morning I went home and I started working on uh, putting together a sort of a, a mini-series how-to on how to build your own parts guitar. Because it wasn't a kit, I didn't do any of that. I, all the parts were handpicked, and everything was painstakingly thought of. Every part, every single screw in that guitar, there's a reason for it. And if you point at it and ask me, I will tell you. It's that. That's how much detail I put into it. Now, it looks old, and that was one of the other things that I will always like seeing online was those guys that had the relic they call it relic where it's just uh, it's new and it's modern but it just looks old now mind you I had zero experience with any kind of editing equipment for re recording video I had some experience with audio um, back when I was full time I had a little mini studio where I had pro tools and stuff so I was a little familiar with that but that was it I wanted to keep it short and to the point not a lot of you know useless talking I also wanted to make sure that my guitar was in my hand for every episode and then I played a little bit before or after or sometime there was a little bit of playing going on because for me the video part of it wasn't 
the point. The point was was that, that you know I built this thing out of parts, and uh, here it is, and I'm playing it, and, and you could build one too. So that was the idea. Now I want to go back a little bit to that previous July, July 2018. I've always been a big fan of uh, documentaries on Egypt and that sort of thing. I was cruising through YouTube one day and I saw this channel's thumbnail. It looked very, very Egyptian and it was called The Emerald Tablets of Thoth. And I thought, hmm, that looks pretty cool. And it was an audio book. And so while I was doing stuff, I uh, would play this. And um, I was actually mesmerized by it. Like it was just really interesting the way that uh, things were worded and, and how he explained things. In the beginning of the book, it says something to the effect of, you won't understand all of what you read the first time through, or the second time, or maybe the third or the fourth time through. Just keep reading it, and keep reading, and keep reading. It will change your life. And I remember kind of chuckling a little bit, thinking, yeah, okay. <laughs> whatever you say but it was still really cool and so I just listened to it all the time while I was building my guitar I listened to it while I was working out in the shop I listened to it I listened to it when I was going to bed like there was something about it that just drew me in and it wasn't until like a year later after I started going through this whole process that I realized that was the very very beginning of the seed being planted for the whole change that I was about to embark on <laughs> And it, so the, they were right. The book was absolutely right. It did change, completely change my, my life and the way I was going about it. It didn't do it overnight, and I didn't win the lottery or any of that crap. But, like, literally, the process that I'm about to explain that I went through, that book was the very, very, very beginning of it. And I've always been very open to that sort of thing. I've loved the metaphysical mystical type of stuff i think i said in a, one of the earlier episodes that i when i was a 18 i read a book on shamanism and i thought man that would be so cool to live that life but too bad nobody does it anymore <laughs> yeah that's what i thought <laughs> and back in my hometown i think i was right around 18 i learned of uh this group of people that were psychics and every Tuesday they would go to one of the bars around town and uh, you could go pay them like five or ten bucks for a 15 minute reading and I really really had a great time with that I just loved it I didn't and, and I didn't tell people you know I first went with a couple of my friends and we kind of laughed it off you know but then I started going by myself and I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want people to think I was crazy and that's the truth it was a much different time too. I mean, things were a lot more closed off and you were commended for fitting in more than you were commended for standing out. So, you know, and I could fit in just fine sometimes. <laughs> when I really worked at it, I could, but regardless, that that, that was kind of the thing. So, so I, I secretly really enjoyed that sort of stuff, you know, and, um, Obviously, when you go to church and stuff, they poo-poo on all that, you know, which is fine. So my experience with, with church and in my back of my head, I was just like, whatever. Uh, I loved the Greek mythology, the, the stories in Greek mythology. And one thing I figured out when I was in that class was that uh, these stories are older than the Bible most of them have a moral to them right so it was like their way of keeping each other in line is sort of if you fly too close to the sun you're gonna burn your wings you know that sort of thing so it was very interesting that way too so I have always been sort of open to all kinds of ideas and even when I was in Minnesota I went to a reader one time well more than one time like a few times and when I was in Louisiana, I went to a reader a couple times down in the French Quarter. So periodically, I would always, you know, if, if I could find one, I would go and check it out, man. I, I just really loved the, the whole idea. Now, 
when I would go to these readers, it wasn't necessarily always about telling my future, but it would get me thinking a lot and it would spark something in my brain that was inspiring to me. So I had been listening to this book for months. I built my first parts guitar and filmed a little bit of it. Then after having this conversation with the universe or my higher self or whatever you want to call it, the idea was like, just try it, dude. Just try it and see what happens, man. And so with temp service jobs, I could like just work when I absolutely needed to. And so I sort of took that few months and uh, tried to, to do the best I could with it. So there I was, 12 hours a day. I was practicing again. I was inspired to at least start to make something creative again. I was on three different medications at the time. I had automatically the next day quit two of them, like just like that, just done with it. And I was kind of excited about learning something new and uh, trying this thing out. So I was working on this stuff and I was at a high point of frustration, very high point of frustration. And I needed to take a break. And I thought, well, why don't you just check out a tarot channel just for the heck of it, just to see what it's like, you know? So I was checking out these different tarot channels and I would take a break, I would get on there and watch that, you know, and just have some fun with it. Then I came across this one tarot channel that something about it was just drawing me in. Like I'd, I'd switch and watch somebody else and then I'd switch back and watch this one and I'd, I'd keep going back to it and I couldn't figure out why. It was just like something about it was just really drawing me in. Little did I know that my intuition was fixing to kick into overdrive too. So one of the first things that happened was um, I had been working on this logo and it was really something simple and it had uh, like it was like K Drew 2 guitars or something like that where I had my fingers holding up like you know to make the two but like I flipped it around the other way you know what I mean like it wasn't like the, the normal way and uh, at the end of one of her, her videos she said there's somebody that's gonna do something with two like two and and she held her fingers up like I did like on my logo and something something in the back of my head told me this is for you this message is for you it's like somebody's tapping on your shoulder telling you to listen just listen you know it's, it's pretty crazy now it doesn't happen all the time and sometimes it's like a minute sometimes it's like five seconds it doesn't matter it's just every once in a while something would come through and it would be like dude that's your that's your message right there and if I ever thought of what the Oracle of Delphi ever looked like, it would have been her. Now, from what I understand, most tarot readers, they do something called channeling, which they're getting messages from their higher power or their guides through the cards, but the cards don't necessarily need to be there. It's just a sort of a divination tool. It's a tool for them to be able to get the message out. So by this point, the only real experience I had with anything metaphysical or mystical was a few of the readings, a couple books I might have read, and the book of thought that I was listening to. So I had no idea, like, what was about to happen. None. No clue at all at anything. But I was getting these messages through this channel, and it was helping a lot. One of the things that really convinced me too was like uh, there was things that she would talk about where I was just thinking how how could she know about that? How could she possibly know about that? And then one day I was watching and I was getting like this repeating message and I thought that's kind of odd. So I clicked it off for a day or two and I watched another one, another lady that... Uh, the funniest thing happened, man. Like, she was explaining how the readers will get a consistent message, and that's how you know that they're really for real. And I thought, wow, that is so crazy. Like, that answered my question, you know? Like, what the heck is going on here? So I'm learning uh, about editing video and trying to do that, practicing all the time. Also learning about this metaphysical stuff that's kind of cool. And once a week I would put out a video. 
then every once in a while I would get a message like I needed to tweak this or I needed to do that and it was just as real as somebody sitting right next to me talking to me. I also noticed that the last medication I was on while I was practicing was affecting my ability to be coordinated. It was like I felt slowed down like it just wasn't good. So, so I quit that. I had been a smoker since I was 18 and um, I quit that. That was, that was a little bit longer process but throughout my life I've tried quitting smoking you know for uh, years and it just never would I could never shake it but this time I quit and it's been since that April of 2019 was the last time I smoked a cigarette but that one was a little little bit harder to shake like I stopped smoking smoking but I went vape for a couple months and then I went lozenges for a couple months but by September of 2019 I was completely nicotine free and feeling pretty good about it So there was things going on that I couldn't explain. Now, uh, throughout this process, especially in the, that first couple months, I know I was going through a lot, just withdrawing from stuff, you know, but it, it didn't, the craziest thing about that whole thing was like, it didn't bother me one bit. And it wasn't like somebody saying, you need to do this, you need to do that. It was just my mind said, I'm done with it. I am done with it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. I'm sick of living the way I've been living for all this time, and I'm completely over it. So let's let's just uh, quit and move on. And I would hear statements like raising your vibration and the secret and different things like that, and I did not know what the heck anybody was talking about. So I would get curious and look things up. I came across Esther Hicks channel which she was like uh, she would channel an entity that came in and talk through that now this stuff does sound kind of out there and that's fine nobody has to I am not saying this stuff to try to convince anybody of anything but what I am saying is that this is what happened to me and it happened to me as real as somebody slapping me in the face and also, as I was going through this stuff, I had an uncle that was, uh, he was in the military for a few years, and um, his beliefs were more on the Eastern philosophies type stuff, you know, like Buddhism and that sort of thing. And so I was looking that stuff up too, and it was really, really resonating with me too. So, so I wasn't just looking up the mystical and the metaphysical and the esoteric. I was also very curious about the different philosophies. Meditation came up quite often. And kind of odd things like my hands would feel like electrical. Almost like um, like a lightning rod. You know, like, like something from above is electrifying my hands. I couldn't figure out what the heck that was, you know. Like I said, I was completely clueless on to really all the stuff that was happening at that point. I was gaining an interest in Reiki healing, but the biggest thing that came up was meditating, right? Like, that is one of the most beneficial things that anybody can do. Simple. Just quiet your mind. So I made me a nice quiet place, and when I'd listen to Esther Hicks, she would say like, uh... You know, just do it for five or ten minutes, especially if you're first starting, you know, so just don't worry about it. Just do it for five or ten minutes and eventually you'll get better at it. So I tried. And like 30 seconds felt like an hour and a half. <laughs> so <laughs> I tried and I tried. <laughs> 
and my mind at that point is like the circus you know like when i try to quiet it down all of a sudden i hear <laughs> so i reached a point of frustration with that and put it away for a while let's just say <laughs> and while i was doing all this i was making the videos and really nothing was even happening with that too but at least it started getting me back to playing music again. So it was very magical in that kind of way. And while I was making these videos, it really started to reignite that passion again. So I was practicing more and working on this stuff. And it was getting a little bit better with the videos, but not, not as fast as I thought it was going to. And I was really in my head about the whole situation and just getting, I don't want to say frustrated. It was just getting more and just like daunting, like, you know, this is just never going to happen. So one day I was watching one of her videos and right at the very end, like she like literally was getting ready to shut it off and said, oh yeah. Lisa Eckhart Tolle wants to duke it out with you. Well, I thought, I wonder who that is. And I looked it up. And um, it was Eckhart Tolle's daughter from Germany or something like that. But anyway, looking her up led me to Eckhart Tolle's site. And so I started watching his videos. And he has this calm demeanor about him that just like is comforting it's just completely comforting and the way he explained it completely resonated with me in a much better way he said uh, you don't have to just be in a quiet room when you're meditating he said it's a lot like an athlete being in the zone you're not thinking about anything else you're just in the present moment and so I tried some of his exercises that he had said to try to do and that and it was going much better, like much, much better. So while I was working on that, I made the connection that uh, when I'm playing my guitar and I'm not in my head, that's what I'm doing. It's like a, a direct line to God or source or the universe, however you want to say it. But whenever I'm playing my guitar, I feel connected, like absolutely connected. And uh, that was a huge, huge moment for me. Because um, before that, I just, I did it unconsciously, you know, like absolutely unconsciously. And when things were really great on a gig, the crowd would be just right and everything would be just perfect. I would feel like I was flying, like I wasn't there, but I was there, you know. And it just felt like connectedness, like I was connected with the universe sort of a thing. So I worked on the videos, and I worked on myself. Um, there was another point where they were talking about getting rid of things that uh, no longer serve you, and I had a whole house full of that. So I went and got rid of everything. It took like three weeks. So by watching this one tarot channel, I, over a period of about six weeks, started learning about meditating, started learning about getting rid of baggage in my life. I quit smoking. I was no longer on medications. And like I said, it wasn't like somebody was like telling me to do this stuff. It just felt like I had to do it. It felt like it was time and I had to do it. And I was serious about changing my life. I was ready. I was absolutely ready. So I finished up the series and I think I had 38 subscribers or something like that. And I thought, well, I tried it. It didn't work. I don't need this stuff anyway. All I need to do is get back to playing. So I did the old school way. I went to open mic nights and just started meeting people again. Getting up there and sucking. <laughs> but hey, it was a way to get me into that drive to really start working on things. In, in my mind, there's nothing more satisfying than playing with musicians that you meet for the first time and you connect on stage, 
and you're communicating without saying a word. It's just through how you play. There's a certain kind of body language that you have when you're on stage where other musicians pick up on it. There's a certain kind of look that you can give where other musicians pick up on it. And it's like this language that you're not saying anything. You're not talking at all, except for maybe, you know, maybe you'd say, all right, this is in the key of A, and then you go, you know. But for the most part, it's like non-communicating, communicating. <laughs> so, I mean, like, how magical is that, you know? That's like the epitome of, of what these people are all, all talking about all the time. You know, and I've been lucky enough to unconsciously have this in my life pretty much my whole life. Pretty incredible. So by this point, it's like the end of June, I think, or so. And I'm discovering this whole new world. And life was actually getting exciting again. It was getting to be a lot of fun again. But I was having a hard time finding work. And I don't know why, because I've never had a hard time finding work, but I could not find any work. So I'm kind of stuck in a spot where it's like, well, I got to do something here. So I ended up selling the trailer and the land, and I had to go back home. And I was not happy about it at all. So I had to sell something, I think, and I was in my car. In the whole way to go meet this person to sell what I had to sell. So I was arguing in my head. I, I didn't sign up for that. I, I just wanted to play music. I didn't want to do all this other stuff. So I was at a stop sign and I'm in my head just pissed, you know, just like. And I had my window down. It was a four way stop. And this guy on a motorcycle, now he was on a motorcycle, drove by. And Pat Benatar's Hit Me With Your Best Shot was playing. And I thought, holy shit. <laughs> Is this stuff actually real? Is this, Did that really just happen to me? Because I knew it was for me. I knew absolutely it was for me. And then after that, I, all, all I could do is laugh. All I could do is laugh. And I thought, you know what? These guys, whoever they are, whoever my guides are, because I had no idea at this point who they were, they know me. They know me and they know how to talk to me. And... And that's when I realized that this is the road I need to go on. And so I'm just going to keep following the breadcrumbs the best I can. So while I'm cleaning everything out and getting ready to go back to Michigan, I did have a different perspective on it too after a little while. I thought, you know, it would be great to see my family again. Also, I could reconnect with some musicians. And we'd always get each other up and play. Like if they come to see my gig, I would get them up to play. And it didn't matter. Like if... Even guys that quit for a while and came back, they would get up, get them up to play. So I knew I would at least get some kind of stage time again without going through too much painstaking process of auditioning and going doing all that crap because I wasn't ready for that yet. I just wanted to play. I also knew enough people there that I could find work anywhere, anytime, anyway. So I was Michigan bound. Loaded up the dog and we headed home. And I think this is a great place to end it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really enjoy talking about it. And this is what happened to me. This is absolutely as real to me as real can be. So I hope you have a great week, a great day, whenever you're watching this. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you.